that time again. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal, and this is episode number 37. My name is Deborah, and I live here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. I like to knit, I like to crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry. I'll do any craft once and twice if I like it. Uh, I am also a professor of physics and astronomy at a local university where I teach classes to physics majors and also general education classes on topics ranging from general physical science to upper division astrophysics, modern physics, and meteorology. Plus, I also do a volunteer planetarium program to school groups usually once a week. And so I like to talk about science topics. Um, and I am also a farmer. I am the third generation of my family to own this land, which my family has lived on for over a hundred years. And I raise grass-fed beef cattle, horses, heritage poultry, show quality rabbits, and I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, and a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost. And as you can tell from my fidget butt <laughs> co-host Willie here, I am fur kit mom to 14 dogs, six, seven indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside cats. So if any of all of that sounds interesting to you, I invite you to come along as we start episode number 37 of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. If you're looking for us on social media, my farm Facebook page is the same as my YouTube channel name. It is Buckthorn Farms. You can also find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Doc Firewoman. And there is also a Ravelry group for the podcast where I talk about make-alongs and there's general chatter. Plus, there is a giveaway thread right now for my Podiversary giveaway. Uh, I am also on Twitter, but I am a fairly socially left-leaning liberal, and so you may not want to follow me on there if that kind of stuff gives you high blood pressure. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you can find me in those places, and I encourage you to come check out our Ravelry group. We have several make-alongs currently going on, which are year-long make-alongs. Those include the Farmer's Almanac make-along, which there is a monthly drawing for a pattern prize, plus there'll be a year-end draw, FO draw. Uh, for a physical prize. Um, there is the Never Have I Ever, where we aim to learn something new, and that is a random, any craft make-along random prize draw from something that you've learned. And there's a lot of knowledgeable people, so it's a great place to get help. There is also the Creature Feature, which I am co-hosting with Laura from the A Crocheting Whovian podcast. And there is the I Like Big Shawls and I Cannot Lie, which I am hosting with Vanessa from the A Historia Knits podcast. And last but not least, there is the Kitter Getter Done, which where we're going to do any craft to make up these kits. So you can read all the details about those on my Ravelry group. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about those this week, um, but you can go there and you can find out more. Um, most of them for me involve uh, prize drawings maybe every month or every six weeks for patterns and then there will be a year-end uh, physical prize to give away uh, at the end with people's FOs. Um, there are some other make-alongs going on including thank you for being a friend from the now two sticks and string formerly Army Wife Knit Knitting Life podcast with Jessica which is a Golden Girls theme knit along. Pin Hook and Needles has the Ready Set Go and the Tea and Tails uh, make along over on their thread. Um, also Knick Knack Knits has a Scrappy Knit Along and the Sock It To Me Year Long Finished Socks Cow going on. So go check all of those out. Uh, if there are any other ones I apologize. I have kind of decided to podcast at the last minute uh, today I had not intended to podcast this soon and so I am not as organized as I normally am but I had something I needed to to, to talk about today so um, that's why we're here so you'll have to forgive me but before I forget go to my Ravelry group and enter my Podiversary giveaway I'm going to post a picture of the prize there probably later today but there is a physical prize for that I'm going to leave that open through my Podiversary which is February the 28th, and after that, I will close it on March 1st, and I will do a drawing um, 
for that physical prize to give away. So I hope I've, I've loved reading the responses so far. There is a writing prompt there. So I hope that you will go over there and participate. If you're a new viewer, I sure am glad that you're here. And if you're a returning viewer, I want to welcome you back. I appreciate so much everybody uh, watching and giving me good positive feedback. Um, so we're going to move on now and we're going to talk about finished objects. Okay, I'm going to get this part out of the way first, and this is why I decided to go ahead and podcast um, early. Um, so, I'm going to show you this object, and I'm going to tell you about it, and then I will give you a little bit of an explanation as to why I'm podcasting uh, now instead of waiting until the end of the week. Willie has found his Coke bottle. Just a second. Come here, buddy. Don't play with that. Okay? All right. Um, this is in my April 9 Designs Beautiful Alpacas bag. Charlotte makes beautiful bags. Uh, I will link her down in the description box. He's going to keep playing with it. <laughs> um, and what is in here is my Lunar Phase Mystery Knit Along. I bound it off this morning and it is done. It is a pattern, which I'm going to take that away from you. Give me that. You can't have that right now. Um, that's his toy. He likes to play with Coke bottles. Uh, it is a beautiful shawl by Larissa Brown. Uh, I did her, um, this is the right side. I did her Moon Phase Mystery Knit Along last spring. And this was her December Knit Along. Of course, I got way behind on it. But it is a beautiful, narrow, crescent-shaped shawl. I haven't blocked it, haven't woven in my ends. I literally finished binding it off about an hour ago. So, I love the design. I think her patterns are extremely easy to follow and very well written. I encourage you to check out any and all of her patterns. Um, so, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this shawl and learned a lot of new techniques, including some short row uh, shaping and picking up stitches and things like that. And uh, now we're going to talk about the yarn. Okay, so I've put some thought into how I want to handle this and it's I've been on trying to figure out the best way to handle it and I'm gonna take my inspiration from a post where it says um, you need to have an open heart with backbone um so here goes and I realize that this may make some people angry and if it does that's your right and if you feel like you need to unsubscribe then you go on and do that that's fine you know, that's your choice. Um, but I have to, I have to speak to my beliefs and my, you know, the way I see the world. I purchased this yarn last November at a fiber festival from Potion Yarns. Okay. Uh, I've talked about it several times on here. I interviewed her on my blog. I had a nice conversation with her. Um, most of you, if not all of you, are aware of a video that her channel posted late last week that, to me, was very disappointing. It was, in my opinion, condescending and tone deaf to the situation that's currently going on in the fiber community. Nobody likes to be called out on a mistake. I don't, when I'm teaching class and I make a mistake, when I've made mistakes handling situations with students, nobody likes to be called out. But when you make a mistake, you need to do something about that. Mistakes, by definition, aren't intentional. And so, when someone points out that you've made a mistake, in my opinion, what needs to happen is if I make a mistake, I need to own it. I need to apologize for the mistake. I need to make right whatever it is. I need to try to learn from the experience. But what I don't need to do is try to explain why someone should not have been hurt by my mistake when they were hurt. If someone hurts me, the last thing I want to hear is them explain to me why 
it's okay that they hurt me and we should just all get over it and move on and get everybody needs to get along and everything that minimizes the hurt it minimizes my humanity and it devalues me and my feelings nobody wants that nobody wants to be felt made to feel that way if I've been hurt I've been hurt and those feelings are authentic and legitimate and genuine and I should be allowed to feel those so by saying we need to all get along we should all you know move on and gloss over this this is a situation that needs to be addressed and worked on and it's not time to gloss this over if you remember a few weeks ago I talked about abscessed wounds and how if they heal on the outside and they're not healed on the inside they're gonna bust out well we got to heal from the inside out inside out you know racism is the tip of the iceberg facing the pathology of the world we live in where there are marginalized communities based on their skin color based on their sexuality based on their gender based on their religious beliefs based on their spirit you know their or not you know religious or not based upon their ability to learn their ability to have physical movement based upon their mental health their physical size or appearance society marginalizes these people what is accepted in society marginalizes these people and it is not their job to be to unmarginalize themselves it's our job as the greater whole to change the narrative and unmar and, and be a more accepting community it's our job to do that not theirs um, it is our job to listen and to learn and to make the changes within ourselves so that we can make changes in the bigger world racism comes in a lot of guises every day when I drive to work I drive past a house that flies the Aryan nation flag and the swastika out front you know clearly they have their beliefs right which I want nothing to do with but it can also come in more subtle ingrained societal behaviors that seem on their surface to be innocuous but they're not and those are the behaviors that I'm working to change within myself by using the me and white supremacy workbook and having to face up you know think about things very critically and face up to those things those are behaviors that I feel like the only way that I can move forward as a better person, as a better ancestor for future generations, and as a better contributor to the world as a whole, as a whole are things that I need to work on. Trying to gloss over them, trying to say, let's just all get along, that just minimizes and diminishes and dehumanizes those people who are saying, I'm hurt, whoever they may be, and for whatever reason. So, I feel like the video did nothing to move the conversation in a positive direction. All it did was further perpetuate these minimizing behaviors and dehumanizing behaviors and it was it was it was not good. It was wrong and it should not have been done. If we want to fix these problems within ourselves and within society, we can't gloss them over. We have to, to look deeply at them and face the hard truths about ourselves and about society's institutions. You know, can't, can't gloss over them. So I feel like I have to support makers and I have to support causes that share my ideals and my beliefs and so I will no longer be supporting potion yarns it's just the way it is I'm not going to support someone who does not share my ideals and my beliefs so I'm gonna vote with my pocketbook and do that so 
I hope that y'all can at least understand my per perspective on this. If you disagree, that is your right. But from my, from my perspective, this is what I need to do to move myself forward into a better place and to be a better ancestor. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And we're going to move on and talk about my other finished objects. Okay, my other two finished objects this week are actually not fiber related. I made two baskets. I went to a basket class yesterday at Lake Darnell State Park, taught by my friend Sasha. Oh, do you want your bottle here? Okay, come on. I wouldn't let him have the bottle during that other part, so I'm going to let him have it now because he's wanting to climb. <laughs> okay, he doesn't want the bottle. He wants me. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I went to a basket class um, with my friend Sasha the other day. Uh, yesterday, in fact, and we made this really cute little napkin basket. It's a little open bottom napkin basket. You can put your cloth napkins in here. It's got two little handles. It's just a simple um, continue, or simple start-stop woven basket with a woven base um, and two handles. The handles have tacks on them to hold them in place. So this was a really simple, cute little project. I think these would make great gifts. Now, my other finished object I gotta reach around here to get it because it's pretty big. <laughs> I didn't realize how big it was gonna be. I finished my 1950s style baker's basket. These baskets were made in order for people to carry loaves of bread in. So they are, they have a large surface area, but they are fairly shallow, so you can stack the loaves of bread. I put the bracing supports under the bottom here. And what I didn't realize is I was out of my half inch natural reed. So I ended up using this half inch. I think this color is called walnut uh, reed. So um, yeah, this is all these supplies came from North Carolina Basket Works. And this pattern is a free pattern on their website that you can get. And this is an easy weave, but managing a basket this large has its own unique um, idiosyncrasies. <laughs> This basket was pretty easy to manage because it's small, but managing one and getting one tight and squared up and just the surface area needed to weave a basket this large um, took, some, took some work. <laughs> it took some work, I'm not going to lie. Um, there is a pattern, on the pattern, there is a way to make it slightly less gargantuan. <laughs> so uh, this is actually a gift along with a little gingerbread apron for Miss Betsy. So... She doesn't watch this, so I can go ahead and show it. It's got the braces on the outside. These are called Those are called the feet, okay, on the outside. And then it's just another start-stop um, simple weave. So very, very cute basket. It was an easy basket to make. It just took a while simply because it's so large uh, to clear off the footprint to put it. So, yeah, those are my finished objects for this week. So now we're going to move on and talk about works in progress. Okay, so let's talk about my works in progress. Um, I don't have as many to show as if I had waited <laughs> to podcast, but I do have my two projects that I've been carrying with me to work every day in my little Friends of Science bag here. Um, the first one is the uh, Simple Chevron Scarf by Karen Martinez, and it is knit in String Theory Color Works Hawking Radiation. You see my ball is getting steadily smaller here. Um, the last time I podcasted, which was the beginning of last week, it was right here, and I have added this much to it. I'm on the home stretch now, so I think that this is what I'm going to focus on finishing next and get this off my needles uh, so that I can move on to some other things. So um, this is my meeting knitting or before class knitting or uh, whatever you want to call it. So didn't get as much done this week because I gave take home tests. So I was grading papers mostly this week. Um, so I didn't, didn't have as much time to work on it this week. Um, I did sit and knit on it on Friday evening while I was waiting on the guy to come fix my heater. Um, he uh, was supposed to be here at 3 uh, so I was sitting outside waiting for him in my car. He called at four and said he was on his way, but he needed to drop the sofa off at home because it was about to rain and he doesn't live far from me. He showed up at 7.30. <laughs> I gave up after about 4.30 and went in the house and, and got warm, but my heat is fixed and it actually was something that um, 
um, he had inadvertently done the last time he was here fixing. So he was very sweet to fix it and uh, was very kind. But anyway, so it's getting to be pretty long. Um, I'm thinking, you know, I don't want it to be like a Doctor Who scarf, but I've got about probably another foot to put on it and then I'll be good. So I'm going to focus on finishing this next and get that off my needle so I can work on some other stuff. Um, okay, so the other thing that's in here is my Adirondack Wrap by Chiwe Rink, which is One Dog Wolf on um, Ravelry and also on Instagram. This is a kit that I purchased from Lion Brand Yarns, so this will be a kitter getter done. So that's the black and white image of it there. And this is knit out of the Lion Brand Mandala yarn. And I just added a few rows to this because this is only the only time I've worked on this lately is when I've been doing planetarium shows. And I have to count to make sure I keep my stitch count right. But I have added about four rows to it since you saw it last week. I had a planetarium show on Wednesday, so I worked on this while the movie was playing. Um, so once I finish the scarf, this will be the next thing up that I need to work on uh, there. So that, again, is the Adirondack Wrap by Chiway Rink, or One Dog Wolf, on uh, uh, Ravelry and on Instagram. Um, I have not worked on my little penguin, but that is also a One Dog Wolf pattern. I haven't worked on it at all. Um, I, well, I take that back. I stuffed it. <laughs> oh, well, don't fall, Willie, don't fall. Uh, I stuffed it, so his little body is stuffed now. Um, so, yeah. Still hadn't figured out how to say this yarn. Boosle, boucle, boucle. I need to look that up, y'all. Somebody, Vanessa, you told me how to pronounce that once before, and I have forgot. <laughs> anyway, so I got those things worked on. Um, I'm still have my, um, I still have my um, Gothic Angel shawl. I haven't put any time in on that. Uh, yet, so I'm not going to show it at all this week. So now we're going to move on and talk about future crafting. Oh, I didn't say this in the social media section, but all my prize winners ought to be getting packages this coming week. Um, I know that the mail doesn't run tomorrow because of President's Day, but I mailed everybody's packages out on Friday and most of them had a delivery date of Tuesday or Wednesday. So hopefully all my prize winners packages ought to be get there. And I so am grateful for your patience in waiting on those. I apologize that it took me uh, as long as it did to get them mailed out. But I will try to do better in the future about that. So uh, again, I apologize for not getting those out sooner. Okay, so in future crafting, um, I have uh, a couple of things. One of them is a sewing project. I got this really sweet fabric uh, as a Christmas present from Miss Mary. She knows my heart. She's got me some farm animal fabric here. Okay, um, isn't this sweet? I just love this. And I want to make myself an apron out of it because I love aprons. I never remember to wear them, but I sure do like to collect them. I've got this nice red sportswear to line it with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the Paisley Pin Cushions Shopkeeper Apron. I like the full coverage aprons. A half apron to me is useless. I get stuff on me up here and on my belly and everything else when I'm working. So really they're all kind of useless because I forget to wear them. But hey... <laughs> Anyway, I ordered these several years ago, and I have made many, many of this particular style of apron. It has the contrast uh, pocket on it there, and then it's lined. Uh, I've made many of this style, and I really like it. Um, I also have a couple of other of their patterns. I have this Worker Bee apron, which is also really cute. Um, but I think this one... Um, well, I don't know. I might make this one instead because this might go more to show off that really pretty fabric. I haven't made this one yet, but I bought these a few years ago from the Paisley Pin Cushion. So, um, I'm going to make my apron because the fair. <laughs> Y'all knew that was coming. If you watch me for more than five minutes, you know that's coming. <laughs> Oh, um, then, um, let's see, my next work in progress, or not work in progress, future crafting, 
is I have gathered up now all the yarns that I want to use to finish my uh, marine life blanket. And I had started, remember, on my, um, where'd he go? My jellyfish. So I actually, I'm a, I ripped it back though, and I'm going to hold that double so it'll be the right gauge. But I started on my jellyfish, and the ones that I decided that I would add to the blanket, I sketched out my own narwhal here, so we'll have that. Um, I'm going to add the mermaid, the oyster with the pearl, the seashell, the lobster, except I'm going to make him blue. Y'all remember that giant blue lobster they found? I think it was off of Maine um, a couple years ago. I'll make him blue. Piece of seaweed. And I guess, oh, and coral, the coral. I'm gonna add all of those to my blanket. So that will make it 20 squares. It'll make it four by five. And then um, I'm gonna put it, set it together with navy blue. I'm trying to use different backgrounds on all my different blocks. Um, so what I really wanna do is focus, I said I was gonna focus on that shawl. Honestly, my working at home, and what I work on, when I take my shawl and my scarf to work with me, I do focus on those, but when I'm at home, I take thing, I work on things that are not so easy to travel with. I really want to get this done and see it put together. So um, for the short term, um, I'm going to work on this, I think, at home. That's going to be my main focus at home. Um, my other future crafting is right over here. Let me reach and get it. Oh, gosh. I've had this forever. <laughs> I know Jessica from Two Sticks and String has got a latch hook, and we talked about doing these together. So, um, I'm going to make this little guy. It's a little shaped um, latch hook rug. I haven't made one of these in a million, jillion years, and I thought that that would be really cute. So, there's that. Then, also, and I've showed these before, but I'll just quickly flash them up again. Um... I'll flash one of them up again, and I need to ask an opinion on another one. Um, I'm going to make the Malibu shawl. I thought the pattern was in here. Did I not stick it in here? The Malibu shawl by Jody Brown, and I'm going to... Oh, here it is. Um, I got some needles um, to make this. This is a nice DK weight shawl, and there's one of the podcasts that I follow, and I can't remember which one it was, is having... Maybe it's legacy knits maybe i don't know one of them is having um a knit along for dk weight shawls so i may try to start this one too i've got these three colors of yarn to use for this um this one is just a commercial yarn then this one is shipwreck sheep and this is their won't be erased colorway oh good grief i got strings everywhere won't be erased colorway and part of the money from this colorway goes to the um the um trevor house project this is chicken coop dye works and this is a colorway called texas tea and then like i said this is a um this is a, a commercial uh yarn so i want to work on those Um, oh, before I forget, oh, we'll talk about acquisitions. Never mind. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so in my Happy Knits podcast uh, prize bag that I won from Yolanda, I have my fading point. And I had started it, but I've kind of lost my zeal for it. I love the yarn. It has nothing to do with that. I've just kind of lost my want to make it. So I've got five skeins of yarn. I want to make a big shawl. So I gotta think about it. And I don't have to use all five of them. I mean, they would they would work to break them up and use three or four, but. So I gotta find my, either gotta find my mojo, that light is terrible. I've gotta find my mojo to make this fading point and get on it, or I've gotta find something else to do. I kinda, I don't know, I kinda just don't, I don't know about it anymore. I feel Y'all do that, you ever think, yeah, I'm gonna make this. And then you kinda go, I don't know. Well, that's where I'm at right now, so. Um, you caused a catastrophe, Willie. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to move on now and talk about acquisitions. 
Okay, um, what I started to talk about and what I want to mention here, um, I have a bag ordered from Jasmine at Tesla Knits. I have shown her bags before on the podcast, but I have a bag ordered from her, and right now, I believe it's 25% of her proceeds go to an organization called Right to Dream 2, and Right to Dream 2 is an organization in Portland, Oregon, uh, which was established on World Homeless Action Day in 2011, and they are a nonprofit organization that provides refuge and a safe space to sleep, rest, undisturbed uh, for Portland's unhoused community who cannot access affordable housing or shelter. And their mission statement says they exist to awaken social and political groups to the importance of safe and undisturbed sleep. Our purpose is to create a place where unhoused people can rest or sleep without being uh, rousted by police or private security and without being under constant threat of violence. Um, she is donating. She donates to them regularly. She takes them food and coffee and all sorts of things, which to me is very impressive because she is a graduate student living on graduate student salary. And so that she is that forward thinking is a wonderful, wonderful thing indeed. And I really wanted to support that. So I purchased bags from her. Her bags are excellent value. She also makes sock blockers. She is on Etsy and I will link her uh, down in the down bar. So please go check her out if that's something that you feel like you would like to support. Um, yeah, so always trying to support good causes, right? So um, the other thing that I got this week, um, well, I got a couple of other things that I'll show too, but I ordered, and these were these were my Valentine's Day present to myself from Noelle at Charmed and Dangerous. She had a Valentine's Day update, and y'all know I'm not big on Valentine's Day, but I could not resist these little guys. The first thing that caught my eye was this adorable, and I don't know how I'm going to show this and get it into focus, but we're going to try our best here, was this adorable little... Hedgehog progress keeper. Oh my gosh, isn't she cute? Little hedgehog. Okay, and then the other thing is this adorable, sweet little frog prince. Okay, with his little crown there. Oh my gosh, those were so cute. She makes the cutest polymer clay progress keepers and charms. So uh, I really encourage you to check her out. Um, she is very quick shipping. She makes adorable stuff. I love, love, love her stuff. Then, um, I received, uh, some donations of prizes and then a present for myself. So I will show the present for myself first. Um, this is a, it was a bag and yarn set. The bag. Oh, ho. Isn't that awesome? It's Sparkly Planets. Sparkly Planets. And this is from uh, Miss Mary out of California. Her daughter is the one who is on the board of the Cure CMD, Cure Congenital Muscular Dystrophy um, Association. And um, they, uh, she makes bags to donate for prizes and for sales for her daughter's organization. And she sent me two skeins of Knit Picks Felici. And wrote a note on them. It's Special Reserve. And I love the name of this. It's called Beyond the Wall. And that's got a lot of meaning to me. So Beyond the Wall. And then this is their, their sock yarn. So I am very much looking forward to using that, Miss Mary. And thank you so much. She sent some oranges too. And they're delicious. But she also sent two beautiful prizes to the to you guys the podcast viewers and i am going to save these for um year-end prizes she sent these beautiful bags here's a saint patrick's day bag with some gorgeous green yarn and then this oh this one is amazingly beautiful this beautiful bright colored bag with some beautiful multicolored matching yarn oh can you see there we go there that's good and there's also cute little progress keeper zipper pulls on both of these. I'm going to save these beautiful bags and donate these as prizes for year-end uh, things for the make-alongs. So thank you so much, Miss Mary. You just made my day. I, and she also sent me a really cool sweatshirt. 
uh, but I wore it to wore it to teach in this week, and you'll see why when I wear it on the podcast next week. So thank you so much for that. I am so proud to to know you. You have really lifted my spirits many times um, having conversations with you. So I, I appreciate you so much. Um, so yeah, so that's all I'm going to show this week. So now we're going to work move on and talk about science. Okay, so um, school is going pretty well. We are um, working on getting ready to go to the National Severe Storms Lab with my meteorology class. My other class seems to be doing very well um, so far. We are planning, like I said, our trip to the National Weather Service and the National Severe Storms Lab will be coming up in a couple of weeks. I'll try to take a few pictures, a little bit of footage of that um, for um, for here. Um Planetarium shows are kicking off. You know, we're starting to get more groups coming in um, for the planetarium shows. And we are starting to schedule like our year-end events like Girls of Power. I did find out that Ray Montague, who was the lady that I spoke about speaking at Girls of Power last May, uh, who was Arkansas's hidden figure, she actually passed away this past fall. I was very sad to hear to hear about that. Um I've been listening to a lot of uh, videos from a couple of different channels. I've mentioned SciShow before. There's also a channel called It's Okay to Be Smart. I like to listen to that one a lot. Uh, and also Veritasium and Vsauce. Uh, those are all channels that have some really good science videos. And in fact, this week I listened to a really good one about deep time, about understanding these long uh, time scales that we look at when we talk about like geological time or evolutionary time. He did a really good job of showing the progression of that using a rope and some markers on a rope. So I'm going to link that uh, below. Um, also, there was a really cool um, video on SciShow Psych about dreaming and about um, the things that happen when you're dreaming and why you dream about certain things. And I thought that was really cool. But one of the things that I wanted to share with you is when we went to Adkins this week, Sasha came and uh, talked to the kids and we made plaster casts of molds of mammals. And we learned some really cool things about mammals uh, that a lot of the students may not have known. One of the things that I think is cool is when you look at the difference between, say, a dog's uh, paw print or a cat's paw print. Um, I did some plaster casts myself this is a plaster cast of a mountain lion's foot and up there is fur but you notice there's no claws because cats have retractable claws and dogs don't so when you see a, a paw print that's got the claw marks you know that that's not some form of a cat um so like this one, for example, is a, an immature black bear. So it has the claw marks because they can't retract their claws. But I did find out that gray foxes, we have gray and red foxes here in the state. Gray foxes can retract their claws and they can climb trees like cats, <laughs> which I thought was really cool. Um, the reason we did this is she was describing the part of Thomas Nuttall's journey. Remember we were talking about the naturalist Thomas Nuttall's journey across Arkansas. This is the bicentennial year of it. Um, he was describing cats with spots and stripes. Now, when we think about cats, we think about bobcats or mountain lions, but they had never seen one of those in Britain, which is where he was from. He had seen domestic cats. So what he was actually describing were skunks. <laughs> Pole cats. He was describing skunks. We have both the striped and the spotted skunks here in Arkansas. We actually used to also be known as the Bear State because we had one of the largest populations of black bears uh, anywhere around. Um, we also have the Buffalo River, and there used to be buffalo in the state, although really after during the time of Lewis and Clark, the herds uh, this far east had really been depleted, but we did have buffalo, and that's a buffalo track that I made there. Uh, we had eastern elk until they were hunted into extinction here. So in the 80s, they reintroduced the Rocky Mountain elk to this part of the state, and they have been a big tourist attraction. Um, I already pointed out this mountain lion, or panther, is what Thomas Nuttall referred to him as, was a panther foot. So there, and you can see it, it doesn't show the claws because they have them retracted when they're walking. 
And then I, I made these smaller ones. We have mink, and we do have minks here in Arkansas. In fact, there's a population of mink that live at Lake Darnell State Park. Woodchuck. And muskrat. Okay, I think these were all, um, that might be a back foot. These are, might be back feet. I don't know. I need to look. Oh, no, this is front. This is a front foot. And then this is a hind foot on the muskrat. Okay. And then this was a front foot on the mink. Those are considered fur-bearing mammals here in Arkansas. Um, so there is a season to hunt those as well. Um, I don't know many people who do that, but I know that there are some people who do that. Um, but anyway, so we made the, the animal tracks with them in our, in our way to talk about Thomas Nuttall and, you know, and to learn a little bit about the state. Like, for example, we see nutria here. Nutria are actually an invasive species. They are not native to Arkansas. And because they have so few natural predators, they're kind of taking over and pushing out our native, native species. Um... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hang on just a second. So, um, I thought it was neat to teach the kids a little bit about some of the mammal species here in Arkansas. We're going to talk about some of the bird species, too. But they may, they never knew that Arkansas's first nickname, before it even became a state, was the Bear State because of our large population of black bears. Um, and like I said, the elk population was restored starting in 1981. It's now a federally... Um, governed program along with the Game and Fish Commission. They exist primarily up in the um, wilderness region of the Buffalo National River, uh, which is America's first wild and scenic river, and it was established in 1970, and then the elk were reintroduced in 1981. Uh, and that's been a pretty big draw. They do have a very limited elk hunt where you have to apply for a permit each year, but the really the big draw is the hundreds and thousands of people who drive up to attend the elk festival, to attend the Ponca Color Fest and just to drive through and take photographs of the elk, especially in October when they go into rut, which is the breeding season when the big bulls are out. Um, one of the most amazing experiences I ever had was being up there very early. This area of the state is beautiful anyway, but being up there very early just as the sun was coming up and there was fog just lifting and I saw a mama bear and three cubs. Uh, the light was starting to shine down into the valley and there was a herd of elk and there was this huge elk. I think he was a six by six or I think he was a seven by seven, which seven on, on one side and seven on the other uh, bugling. Oh, it was just amazing. That sound is just, it, it, it stirs something so deep inside me, this primordial feeling of just what it must have been like before, you know, we kind of started messing the planet up. <laughs> Um, but anyway, um, I love going up to that part of the state anyway, so um, I like learning about that part of the state as well. So anyway, that's all we're going to talk about for science this week. I apologize, I don't have something more formal uh, prepared, but like I said, I kind of decided to do this in a hurry. Um, but anyway, we're going to move on now and talk a little bit about farm life. My neighbors are driving by on their four-wheelers, so the dogs are barking. Um, so, farm life has been fairly interesting the last week. Uh, Willie got hurt, I guess, Tuesday. He was playing, and you know how when kids play, and then all of a sudden they get a little too rough, and you hear somebody go, ah! I, I really thought he was hurt badly. It scared me because he just, when I went to pick him up, he just screamed and cried, and it scared me so bad. Um... And he um, acted like his side was hurt. And I thought, oh, no, what if Ellie Mae stepped on him? <laughs> um, but I think he may have just pulled a muscle because by the next morning he felt much better. And he actually went to work with me um, the that day. <laughs> I took him to work with me. Um, and he seems to be fine now. He's back to his normal self. Um, Barnice is coming out more and more and getting more integrated into the community here at, in the Funny Farm. And um, that, that's really good because I'm glad to see her, glad to see her being part of that. I took a walk out through the garden the other day. I think uh, Heidi from the Packy Knits podcast was talking about gardening. And I took a walk out through my garden the other day and kind of started doing a little visual assessment. Spring break is coming up in about four 
three weeks, four weeks, I guess now. And I'm going to work on cleaning up my garden and starting, getting, starting to get ready to plant. And yes, that right there is where I scratch myself. <laughs> That's not something on my chin. I actually scratched myself the other day. Um, but I uh, was looking around at kind of what I want to do and how I want to. And I really want to try to make a more concerted effort. I said this last year. Make a more concerted effort to have a better garden. But I keep hoping, hopefully one day I'll manage to come through on that. Uh, I am going to order some new fruit trees. Uh, I need to order a couple of new apple trees and a new pear and some mulberries and some plums, I think is what I'm going to try to order. And a, probably a couple of new blackberry vines, too. Um, some tame blackberries or thornless blackberries. And then plus, I'd like some more muscadines. We'll see. I'm just going to order a bunch of stuff and we'll all be surprised. <laughs> um, anyway, um, if you... <laughs> If you follow my Instagram, you'll see that I had a little bit of a war wound the other night. Uh, I went out to put the chickens up, and Ethel, the turkey, was outside the pen. And so, I went to shoo her around and shoo her back in the, the pen to put her up for the night. And she turned around, and she flew up in my face and whacked me on the top of the head. And I still have a sore place there whacked me on the top of the head with her foot. I don't think she got me with one of her claws. I think just the force of whacking me broke the skin. <laughs> so I had a bleeding wound in the top of my head for a while. Um, I told somebody on my virtual knitting group that I got hit in the head with a turkey and she was visualizing a butterball, I guess, falling out of the freezer onto my head. Um, and then when I told her, no, it was a live turkey, <laughs> I thought she was going to um, need oxygen by the time she got through laughing. Um, but anyway, so that's all going very well. Um, like I said, you know, Willie's doing a lot better. The birds all seem to be doing well. I've got to get out. I need a dry, warm weekend because I need to clean out from underneath the rabbit cages. It has just not been the weekends that we've had. If they have been clear, they have been incredibly cold. And if they have been warm, it has been raining. <laughs> so I need a dry and clear weekend to um, work on the... Um, rabbit area we have been at the barn have been busily taking our valentine's day pictures we were supposed to take our valentine's day group picture yesterday and it was way too cold so we have decided to do a easter group picture um i did do some great pictures with my horses i was shocked and amazed at um how well they turned out maria from ninja chickens had posted a thing about body image and I will be honest with y'all, when I was driving over there, I haven't had my nails done. I need my hair cut. I'm a little heavier than I would like to be. I'm feeling a little, you know, wrinkly and tired. And I just was like, I don't know if any of these clothes are going to fit. My makeup is terrible because it's getting old. And I threw a bunch of stuff in my car and I drove over there and I was literally, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was quite literally in tears thinking about having to see these horrible pictures of myself. And I fully believe those horses are magic because we took the pictures. I took pictures with, with Gusty and with Flame and with Bo. And then I took a few of them all together. And Marianne put up a couple of them and I cried. The, the, one, the ones that she put up were so good. <laughs> I have always had body image issues uh, my whole entire life. And to see these pictures just made me feel so good. Those horses are magic. They, I guess when you are feeling joyful, joy makes you beautiful. And it surely helped because I felt really good about them. Um, the one of me and Bo especially is my favorite. The wind blew up and it blew my hair out and it blew his mane out. And it just looked so, I was so happy with that picture. Um, and, then, and there's some really good ones of me and Flame and me and Gusty also. So... I'll share a few of those uh, at the end uh, here, and if you want to see them. Um, but that's pretty much what's going on on the farm this week. It's just been, you know, we're I'm getting low on hay, but I, I got a, a call in to my friend. I got the farm taxes done. That went really fast. I think I was there all of ten minutes because I do all the, I do all the ciphering ahead of time. <laughs> so I got all that done and. Um, 
everything and he started thinking about you know how I want to move forward for this next year uh, I did start doing the critter chat videos and got a lot of positive feedback on those so I am going to continue to do those and I am probably going to do a short tutorial video on pressure canning chicken broth or turkey broth and no it's not the turkey that hit me in the head <laughs> She's still out there. She's just fine. Um, but I took a turkey that I had cooked last week, and I used the used the what was left of it, along with some vegetables. I have it cooking down on the stove right now, and I'm going to pressure can it. Uh, so I'm probably going to do a little bit of a tutorial on that and start a channel, um, start a separate little ch playlist channel, not channel, but a playlist on my channel of just some farm farm gal tutorials. I don't know what I'm going to call them yet, but, um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, yeah, so Miss Betsy and I have got plans to go to an auction next weekend, so that'll be fun. Uh, she's doing well since, since the loss of Susie. Mm. She seems to be doing okay. I went to lunch with her and visited with her for a while and, um, on Thursday after we went down to the middle school and that was good and she seems to be doing well. I had lunch with Mary Ann's family on Friday. They tried since, excuse me, since the death of Uncle Bill, they have tried to get together once a month. So I, she invited me to have lunch with them on Friday and I gave her the bags that I had made um, and everything. So she's going to put all my pictures on a, on a USB drive for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of them because she took a bunch. I think she said she took over 500. So, but anyway, so that's kind of where we're at for now. So I am going to, um, go on, we're going to move on now and I guess close out with a few final thoughts. Okay, well, I appreciate if you've hung with me this long in this video, and I hope that you're all doing really well. I wanted to share a couple of little readings to you from uh, Shel Silverstein. I mean, he is a poet that I grew up with as a kid and actually had some very deep themes uh, to his poems. And so uh, this first one is what guides me as I decide when to speak up about things and what's right. It's called The Voice. And says, there is a voice inside of you that whispers all day long. I feel this is right for me. I know that this is wrong. No teacher, preacher, parent, friend, or wise man can decide what's right for you. Just listen to the voice that speaks inside. So I try to use that guiding principle uh, in my choices day to day. And also on the things I talk about here. Um, you know, because it's all about being a better ancestor, right? Leaving a legacy that people can look on and go, yeah, that was, she did the right thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of words that get slurred in this day and age. Um, and I don't like that. A lot of people's beliefs get slurred. Um, you know, as long as you are genuine and you are a good person, and you are your authentic self, we can hang. But, you know, I won't condone hatred or violence towards anyone. So, that's a I think that's a pretty simple principle to live by, right? I think that's pretty easy to, I think most of us, most of us can be, be okay with that. So, uh, you know, we all um, have our different way of looking at the world and our different beliefs and as long as you're not condoning hatred or violence, we're good. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, the other poem that I wanted to share is also by Shel, Shel Silverstein. And it goes back to how I try to, um, live as a friend. And when I choose to speak up because I feel like it's right, um, for my friends. You know, I'm one of those people that you can be mean to me all day long and I'll take it and take it. But when you start being ugly to people that I love and care about, then I'm more, I'm very quick to say something. So it's called How Many and How Much. How many slams in an old screen door? It depends how loud you shut it. How many slices in a bread? Depends on how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day? Depends how good you live them. How much love inside a friend depends how much you give them. 
So I'm going to leave y'all with that thought. I try to give a lot of love and I feel like I get a lot of love given back to me and I'm very, very grateful for that. And I wanted to say thank you to all y'all. Uh, we're coming up, like I said, on one year and it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience and I am proud to have gotten to know each and every one of you. Um, and I look forward to moving on into the future with y'all. So until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And are you sleeping, Willie? You gonna get up here and tell them? Oh, I'm disturbing you. I'm so sorry. What you gonna tell them? Oh, your ear. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. Bye. Bye, Willie. <laughs>